Greetings, greetings, and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich with Global Vision Ministries, and today I am being joined by Reverend Dean Turner and by you. Thank you for joining us, and please share this broadcast with your friends, your loved ones, and please, it's so easy. All you need to do, if you're watching on Facebook, is press that little share button right now, and <laughs> your friends, your uh, dear ones will be able to join you, and together we can pray, together we can share about the things of God, and please, if you would do that right now, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a little share option there, if you're watching on uh, LinkedIn, there's also a share option there, so please, please do that, it helps to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it engages more people in prayer, and the more people Bring and coming in agreement, the more things God will do. So please do that. And thank you again for joining us. And welcome, Brother Dean. Amen. Thank you. It's good to be back uh, with you again. Uh, I've missed our times together, <laughs> but it's always a privilege and a pleasure to be with you and to spend time with you and to, and to minister to you and hopefully be a blessing to you. Amen. And Brother Dean, uh, you and uh, Sister Doris, we're in uh, Czech Republic as well as Poland ministering recently. Welcome back. And uh, perhaps you could share a little bit about that. And I know that um, uh, those are parts of the world where God is moving in areas that need revival, and we're seeing signs of that beginning. And so uh, uh, we talk a lot about Ukraine here, and uh, we will continue to do a lot of that. But there are these, uh, uh, there are other nations that also um, we also pray for, and of course, we try to pray for all nations. And so, Brother Dean, would you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, Czech Republic? Because we don't hear a whole lot about uh, Czech Republic. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, it was, it was a great time to be there. It had been a period of time since COVID had hit. We hadn't been able to go to the Czech Republic as much as we wanted. And uh, we went on this trip and God had put in our heart to stir up them and to bless them, you know, with a refreshing of the Holy Spirit. And God was faithful and we got to spend good time and, and got to teach a lot and minister to people directly and, and meet some people I haven't seen in years. And so it was a great trip. And the last Sunday we were there, we had a, a wonderful, powerful service and God touched lives. We had visible healings that took place at that time. And I got a letter back from the pastor and he says, thank you so much that they were so encouraged in their faith and being blessed. And so it was a good time in the Czech Republic, but we got to spend some time in Poland also. And uh, it was a, a, a kind of a, how can I say this, kind of a groundbreaking for us uh, to go into that area. And God blessed. We were able to have a number of meetings. And something that I noticed as I was speaking, what God had put into my heart, there was a hunger that was stirred up. And uh, the, we look forward to the next time that we could go and be with the different churches and even more and to help God stir things up, you know, let God use us to stir things up and to bless them in the spirit of God and help them become more strong and be encouraged and blessed. Man, and Brother Dean, uh, you spent a number of years in Czech Republic and uh, as a missionary there. And uh, so since that time and, and now, uh, is there a difference that you're seeing? You're seeing more hunger in the people now? Or what can you tell us about that? You know, I uh, don't want to speak negative words over that country. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But Czech Republic has been a very difficult ground uh, to plant and to harvest from for a number of years. And it seems that there is a, how can I say this? There's almost like a resistance uh, to God. 
Uh, they have since becoming part of the EU and NATO and so forth, that uh, it seems that among the people who are not born again, there is this thought about, well, why do we need God for? We have all of these other things because they have been a very blessed country. And so as a result, they say, well, I don't need God or anything like that. And the churches have worked so hard, but they don't give up. They don't quit. They keep sharing the gospel. They keep ministering to people. And we see little sparks of hunger from time to time that begin to rise up. But that nation, according to what statistics say, is one of the most secular, if not the most secular nation in all of Europe. And that that, uh, that it just, it seems that they just, they really need a move of the Holy Spirit to just stir up things. And without him stirring up things, it becomes a very challenging work. But our friends and ministries that we've been associated for now for uh, 32 years, it's been a long time. And they have continued to be faithful and work and push and continue to minister. And they share the word. They share the gospel. They evangelize. You know, they minister to people personally one-on-one and pray for them. There was a little testimony I'll share with you that happened just before we arrived or during the time that we were there. There was a gentleman that used to be a believer for a long time. This We're talking 20 years ago. And he knew God, and and God was using him in different ways. But he turned away from God, and he'd walked away from him. Well, during this time, just about the time we were there, this gentleman came up to the pastor of the church, and they began to share together. They'd not seen each other for years. And they came together and began to share, and God restored that man back to where he was before. In other words, God brought him back into the kingdom of God, and it became a blessing to him, and he is starting his journey back. So God is moving. We may not see the large gatherings that are getting together, but we are seeing God move here and there. People are coming to Christ. People are getting baptized. We would love to see a great expansion and growth, but what we see there is little step by step by step. So if you're praying in your in your prayer time, would you please remember the Czech Republic because they need a move of God in that nation. And we are believing for that. We stand in agreement with the pastors and the leaders all over that nation that are laboring for the kingdom that God by his spirit will continue to use them and that they begin to touch lives and change that nation step by step. Amen. And, you know, people don't realize uh, that Europe itself is a mission field today. And Czech Republic, as you have pointed out, is a nation that uh, many people, perhaps in the in Christendom, do not realize it, it was such a secular, it had become such a secular country. And I believe, as you said, not only in the most secular, but the most, uh, probably the most atheist uh, country in um, in Europe, uh, unfortunately. However, we believe that God's word being proclaimed uh, will not return void. Uh, God said, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty or void or without producing w- uh, results, without uh, doing things. And that is what you are sharing here, that as God's word is being proclaimed, people are responding. And it starts perhaps with just a spark here and a spark there and a conversion here and conversion there. But, you know, um, that's how it begins. And then God breaks through. Well, he wants to break through. It's a matter of people responding and opening up their hearts. Now, one of the things about Czech Republic for my, uh, I remember we had a crusade there several years ago in in the capital. And uh, I recall that the pastors were rejoicing before because a few souls had come to Christ. I thought it was very few, but to them that was, oh, we, this is big for us because we have so few people that come to Christ. 
And I realized then that um, that certainly it was uh, uh, it, it was a needy country as far as the gospel, and we do need to pray for for the Czech Republic. And one of the things that I had found in reading about the nation is that back some hundreds of years ago, I believe it was a prince um, that had invited all the astrologers and uh, uh, from all of Europe to come and settle uh, right there in the capital. And well, you know, when something like that happens, because this is a nation where also you had the Moravian Christians, you had a certain Christian movement, and yet you had this uh, invitation, uh, basically, to the occult uh, to settle in there. And that has uh, had, obviously, an effect on the nation. And sometimes people think, uh, you know, don't think um, that these things have an effect. They do have an effect. When you bring in false gods, you bring in uh, false religions, you bring in the occult, it's going to affect people and bring blindness, spiritual blindness to people's eyes. But that does not negate the power of God's word. That does not negate the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why what you have done and what those churches are doing, those pastors are doing, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, that word will not return void. Um, I recall one city in the Poltava region where um, I was invited to speak one time while we were holding, I believe, a school there. And um, I found out that they had, um, there were people that had gone there for five years and not one soul would, uh, would respond to the gospel. It was just people would not respond in that one town. But then uh, one, then um, uh, one brother went there, she just felt led of the Holy Spirit to go and and it just broke through, and suddenly things started happening. But sometimes um, we don't, um, you know, we we cannot stop preaching the gospel. We we have to pursue, and that seed that is planted, we may not see the result right then and there, but that seed is going to produce results. We're going to see something happen because God's word never returns void. Brother Teen, why don't we pray for Czech Republic right now and in all of Europe, but but would you pray because uh, this is an area and Europe is in need of revival as the United Kingdom. Amen. Well, oh, excuse me. You know, that country is very dear to our heart. We have a lot of history there. And because of that, you know, it, it breaks our heart when we see our friends working so hard. Yes. And being able to encourage them from time to time has been a blessing to us and to them. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up the nation of the Czech Republic. Father, you know the situation there, and you know those that are laboring for you and for the kingdom of God. I ask, Father, that by your spirit that you begin to touch lives and that there be a breakthrough that would begin to happen in that nation, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no whatever, never mind how it appears, we say, Father, you can break through those things by your spirit. Holy Spirit, sir, I ask you that you begin to work and to break through and begin to open hearts, open eyes. We come against the enemy of lawlessness. We come against the enemy of, of atheism. We come against the enemy that would try to blind the eyes of people to the reality of God. And in Jesus' name, we say, revival, come to the nation of the Czech Republic. And Father, I pray for every pastor, every leader, every person who shares the gospel. I pray that they be empowered by the Holy Spirit and be able to have things happen as they share. And Father, we ask that you will confirm the word with signs following, that you will work miracles and that you work healings to where people will see your power in demonstration to where they will say, God, you are real. And we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. And Lord, we lift up all of Europe. We lift up Poland. We lift up Germany. We lift up France and the Netherlands. Uh, Lord, we lift up the uh, entire region of Europe, uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Father, Bulgaria, Romania, Lord, um, the former Yugoslavia. And Father, we know that there are sparks of fire. We know that you are working in every corner, even in the areas that are Muslim. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would strengthen your ministers. You would strengthen your servants, uh, those who are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give them a supernatural anointing as they proclaim your word and confirm, we pray, your word with signs and wonders, irrefutable proof of the reality of your word and your person. Father, we pray for the United Kingdom. And Lord, even as they prepare for the coronation of their king, Father, may the King, Lord Jesus, you, the King, be the King of their lives. May you enter the lives of many people in that nation who used to send missionaries, who was uh, a Christian nation, that was a Christian nation. Father, we pray that there would be a return to you. We pray that there would be renewal in the churches in the United Kingdom, and we pray for the salvation of many there in the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, Brother um, Dean, I know that um, God is working, and uh, we look forward to, uh, well, well, we'll be going to Poland in order to go to Ukraine here shortly in just a matter of days. And we do pray and we do ask folks uh, that you pray for us uh, wherever you're at. Please remember us as we prepare. It's a, uh, a complicated journey. You cannot fly into Ukraine, as you probably know, because of the war. So we have to fly into a neighboring country, such as Poland. And uh, that is exactly what we're doing. And we have to drive in. And so um, it's... Um, it's a complicated journey, but we are going to have a pastor's retreat again, and they are looking forward. They say it was such a blessing to them. Uh, we call, we're call we calling pastors from the front lines to come in to get a break, a few days break where we could uh, uh, fellowship, we could encourage them. And this will be in Ukraine, uh, but in a safer part of the nation where uh, bombs aren't falling every day. And uh, obviously the whole country is, 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 <laughs> uh, it can, it can be attacked, but, uh, but there are areas that have been safer than others. And that's where we plan uh, have planned this retreat as we did last time. And we're going to, we believe we're going to have a wonderful uh, time with pastors and their wives. Uh, a few of them will bring their children because it's unsafe to leave them in the war zones. And so we are going to um, just have a time of rejoicing, of encouragement. And let me tell you, it's huge for these pastors because uh, they're working relentlessly now for over a year, some of them without hardly a break, uh, just continuing on and on and on. But um, so this will be a time of refreshing for them as we spend time together. But these things cost. And so I'm mentioning this so that you would not only pray, but if God speaks to you and you want to share in helping us to cover the costs of this a retreat, because we pay for these pastors and their families to stay there. We help them with their transportation to get there. And after the retreat, we have plans to be in several cities. Uh, those are still being um, decided, beginning that uh, the situation is fluid, as you know, in Ukraine. But um, we ask for your prayers because it's not, uh, um, it, it's not something easy to do. But we know that God wants us to go there. We're going there. And we believe in obedience to God. God, but um, you can be a part of it as well. And we want to thank you. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank you, Brother Dean, and your ministry for all that you've done for Ukraine 
And I want to thank everyone who has participated in helping to get the stoves out there, helping to get medicines, helping to get food, helping to get clothing, blankets to the needy. And right now we've also taken on helping to rebuild some houses uh, that have been damaged. Uh, areas that were occupied now uh, have come uh, free, helping to rebuild some roofs. Uh, you know, people's roofs have holes from the ordinance, the, the the shelling that had taken place. So um, we're not talking about uh, fancy remodels. We're just talking about covering roofs, fixing some uh, uh, windows uh, so that uh, the windows, uh, the, the air and wind and cold and heat and whatever doesn't come through there um, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, if God speaks to you, we are continuing to do this and uh, it takes time, it takes effort and it takes finances. But let me tell you, it is so rewarding to be able to, to do what God has called you to do. And we cannot recompense you, but God will recompense you. We don't know how and when, but we know that God will not be a debtor to any person. And so uh, if God speaks to you, please, please uh, do that. And, uh, and thank you again for those who have already participated, who continue to participate. And I want to thank you in advance to those who will help us, uh, not only with this journey for uh, to hold this retreat, but also with the ongoing support of these humanitarian relief efforts. They need fuel to be able to get the food products into different towns and villages, because it doesn't do a lot of good if it just gets uh, stored in one big warehouse someplace. It's got to get out. And that's what the pastor we're working with on a daily basis are getting things out to the towns, the villages, the people that need help the most. So thank you again. Um, Brother Dean, uh, back to you. I know that uh, you have a thought for us, but uh, please. <laughs> thank you, my brother. Um, you know, I'm just listening to what you were saying about the retreat and everything. And I'm, I'm telling you, it, it, you'll be blessed if you'll sow into their lives. I can guarantee it. <laughs> But, you know, I just wanted to talk a few minutes a little bit about what happens after we're born again and uh, some things that, that uh, can come into our life that we may not be aware of everything right in the beginning. And I uh, just want to share a few verses with you. I want to start with 1 Corinthians 12, 27. And I was looking at the passing translation, <clears throat> and it says, you are the body of the anointed one. We can add two words to that. It says, now you are the body of Christ, the anointed one, and each one of you is you, you, a unique and vital part of it. So that tells us that the instant that you're born again, then you become a part of the body of Christ here on this earth, and you are unique and you are an important part of the body of Christ. And that when you have received him, now God has some things that are promised to you as a believer. So after we're born again, then we look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. And it says, also in the Passion, it says, For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. Wow. The Holy Spirit confirms that and say, yes, you are a child of God. But verse 17 is also very important. Romans 8, 17, Passion Translation says, and since we are his true children, hmm, we qualify to share all his treasures. Mm -hmm. For indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. We will experience being co-glorified with him provided we accept that his sufferings as our own. And I thought that was so powerful, the verse. Since we are joined to Christ, 
when you are born again, you're in Christ, you're joined to him, you become one. And since we are joined that way, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has because we are joined together with him and we receive the same inheritance that he does. That's what the Bible says. But sometimes it's hard for us to wrap our minds around that, how much of a blessing it is just to be joined to Christ. A lot of benefits that come with being born again. And then Passion Translation, again, I told you I really like this translation. In Galatians 4, 7, it says, we now we're no longer living like slaves under the law, but we enjoy being God's very own sons and daughters. <laughs> and because we are his, we can access everything our father has, for we are heirs of God through Jesus the Messiah. Oh, hallelujah. Because we are his, think about this, because you belong to him, we can access everything our father has. For we are heirs of God through Jesus the Messiah. Colossians 1.12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has glorified us. In other words, he made us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. God made us worthy to receive. See, you're born again. You are worthy to receive. You can't earn it because it is a gift to you. He gives us his inheritance. You don't earn an inheritance. You receive an inheritance. So God made us worthy to receive everything in his inheritance. Well, what's the inheritance? Very quickly, let's look at another verse or two. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and verse 3, it says, may God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of Jesus our Lord. It's a progressive thing. As we grow in our knowledge, things are multiplied more and more and more. Not just stuff, but we're talking about grace of God. We're talking about the peace of God. These things grow inside of us as we get to know him. And verse 3 says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. One more verse, verse 4. And because of his glory, and excellence, his glory and excellence, not ours. He has given us great and precious promises. These, pro these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desire. We have received all of this by just coming to know him. And these are his gifts to his children. But the key is to his children. When you become a child of God, all of these things that we've been talking about for the last few minutes are yours. And I'm going to tell you, it is an automatic thing. It's yours, but you have to receive them. But the very first step is, and the key to all of this is, first, you have to be part of the kingdom. You have to be in the family, and you have to be born again. So if you are born again, I want to encourage you. You have a lot of inheritance to share with Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Well, if someone does not know Christ as their Savior, they can certainly open their hearts right now. It's very simple. Um, you can 
do it wherever you are at. You may be listening to this while driving or, or riding in, a, uh, in some form of transportation right now, or you may be uh, at home. Uh, wherever you are at, you're hearing this. You say, well, how can I be born again? How can I receive Christ into my life? It's very simple. You open up your heart and just say a simple prayer directed to God, and he will hear that prayer not only does he hear our prayers, he answers those prayers. Brother Dean, could you lead people in a prayer receiving Christ? Amen. Well, the scriptures tell us that, you know, that we, with our heart, we believe into righteousness, and with our mouth, we confess uh, the Lordship of Jesus. And it says that if we'll believe that God sent his son and that his son died for our sins. And not only did he die for our sins, but after he died, God raised him from the dead to live forevermore. And it says, if we will believe this in our hearts and speak it out of our mouth, we shall be saved. And the scripture also says, as many as come to him can be saved and will be saved. If you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. So let's pray a prayer together. Dear God, I thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for being willing to die for me. I believe that you died and rose again and I ask you to forgive me for my sins. And I ask you to become Lord of my life and to be my savior. Thank you for receiving me into the family of God. Thank you for forgiving me. And from this day forward, I will serve you. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer or something similar sincerely, God has heard your prayer. Christ has come into your heart. Just begin to thank him and do three things each day. Talk to him. We call it prayer, but it's simply conversing with God. And you can do it at any time of the day or night. You can converse with him. He wants to hear from you. Tell him that you love him. Let him speak to you. Read his word, the Bible. You don't know where to start? Well, I recommend in the fourth book in the New Testament, it's the gospel according to St. John, a very good place to start. The whole Bible is important, but I'm just giving you some guidance as to where it's a good, where it is a good place to start because you'll learn more about the love of God and the transformative power of Jesus Christ in you. Now, let do a third thing and begin to tell others about Jesus that you have received him into your life. And something very important, find a Bible-preaching, Bible-believing church. If there are no churches near you, find a group that meets, that prays together so that you can grow in your faith. It's very important to get encouragement from other believers, to pray one for another, to study God's word, and to grow in your faith. My brother Dean, um, that is so wonderful. Uh, there is such a huge inheritance. And in one of those passages you're reading, the Apostle Paul says the sufferings of this time are really nothing in comparison to what God has done and what God has in store for us. And yes, we may go through trials. We may go through tests in this life. But you know, the rewards, the, the rewards, the inheritance that we have in Christ 
is so uh, is so incomparable uh, to that. Uh, so uh, we we rejoice in what God is doing, and it's so wonderful to be able to serve God and to see lives transformed and uh, around the world. And we thank God for that. So, um, uh, Brother Dean, we've uh, um, uh, we've talked about salvation. We've talked about the inheritance of God. Well. Part of the children's bread is healing, is it not? Yes. So uh, would you talk about that for a moment? And let's pray for those that need healing. Amen. Amen. You know, <clears throat> I, I, I go back to the scriptures and because that's our standard. Amen. You know, when we study the scriptures, part of the price that Jesus paid for us, we know that when he, hang, he hung on the cross that he paid for our sins, the shedding of his blood paid for our sins. That part was paid for. But before he went to the cross, he was beaten. The guards, the Roman guards, they whipped him with a, a special whip that just all oh, just destroyed his flesh. And he was whipped on his back. But it says in the scriptures in Isaiah 53, talking about these stripes, it says, by his stripes or his bruise or his wound we are healed and in first peter 224 it talks about how that he carried our iniquities to the cross and it says by his stripes we were healed in english were past tense it's already done so we realize that the price that jesus paid well, not only for the salvation from our sins, but it was also for the healing of our bodies. That price for healing has already been paid. Now catch that. It's already been paid. All we have to do is believe it and then to receive it. And we... By faith, we believe what the word of God says, that it is true. And if we will believe that, then we realize, okay, that's part of my inheritance. Because I am a child of God, or even by the grace of God, you will even sometimes touch the lives of those who are not in the family of God because he wants to show how much he loves people. Because the Bible says, God so loved the world, he gave his only son, for whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So he gave his son, he gave his son for sin, he gave his son for healing. Now healing is available through Jesus Christ and through God's Holy Spirit. So, Believe that the healing is paid for. And then we ask for this healing to be manifested in our bodies to where it will drive out sickness by the healing power of God that has been purchased through Jesus Christ. And how do we release this power of God? Through our words. And so we speak the word of God against these sicknesses, and we command them in the name of Jesus to be healed. And this opens the door to where the Holy Spirit can move and begin to drive out that sickness based on the promises of God, where he can do healings, where there can be miracles, where there can be signs done. Because one of the signs of those who believe is they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Maybe you're in a position where there's nobody near you who can lay hands on you. Why don't you lay hands on yourself and say, I receive the healing that Jesus paid for me. And speak to the sickness and say, go in the name of Jesus. Speak to the pains and say, go in the name of Jesus. You have that authority based on the promises of God to speak these things into existence. Receive the healing that God has provided. Amen. 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 Uh, so, you know, you may be um, 
you know, in a, a place where you are ha- feeling pain, and and yet uh, the Bible says, pray one for another that you may be healed. You know, as we pray, we are giving, and as we give, we receive, and so there's a reciprocation here <laughs> of uh, praying is like is giving, is sowing. When you sow, you reap. When you give, you receive back. You see, you cannot receive without giving. And that's the hard part for some people. They just want to receive, but they don't realize they have to also give. And so when we pray, not only pray for yourself, but pray for others that are listening right now. And there are people around the world that tune in and some people have a need of healing. Some may be bedridden. There may be some child that's laying at home right now needing a touch of God, or maybe it's not a child, maybe it's an adult. So I want us to pray right now. And Brother Dean, lead us in this prayer. And so folks, as Brother Dean has said, lay your hand on yourself that there's no one else to lay hands on you. You can do that right now. If the Bible says, Jesus said, if we lay, if the believers lay hands, they shall recover, they shall be healed. So would you lead us in prayer, Brother D? And folks, take this seriously right now. And, and if, if there's someone in your home or someone that you know that needs healing, that needs a touch of God, get a hold of them right now. Tell them, tune in right now. There's going to be a special prayer, the prayer of faith, the prayer uh, for healing right now. So before we pray that prayer, get a hold of people, get them to tune in immediately right now and say, listen right now, because there's going to be a prayer. And you know, some of you call us, some of you write us, some of you send us messages. Please pray for this one or for uh, myself. Well, right now is your time. Just tune in right now. We're going to pray for you right now. Brother Dean, lead us in this prayer. The scripture also says, if any two agree as touching anything, it shall be done by the Father. This is what Jesus said. We're going to agree with you right now. You agree with us. And two of us agreeing together will release the power of God to begin to work. Father, in Jesus' name, we speak healing into bodies that are sick. Now, I say healing come, life come, flow into those bodies where life will get rid of the death of sickness. Life flow in their bodies now. I say be healed now in the name of Jesus. Pain, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. We come against sickness, every disease, every name that is named. We know that the name of Jesus is above every name, every sickness. Every sickness has a name. So that tells us that the name of Jesus is greater than any name of sickness. And we say the name of Jesus be healed now. Be restored. Strength come. Cancer, I command you to die and dissipate in the body. Other conditions that have been attacking people, we say be gone now. In Jesus' name, we come against infirmities. We come against spirits of infirmity. We bind you and we command you in the name of Jesus to depart from their bodies and that they will be healed and they will be free. Be free in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Pain go in Jesus' name right now. Amen. Right now, right now, just put your faith in action. What does that mean? Release your faith. In other words, if you have prayed for an arm that you couldn't lift up, you begin to lift that up right now. Try to move it with the faith that God has heard your prayer. You begin to move that arm. You try to do what you could not do. So put your faith into action if you can right now. Some things you just have to wait and you'll see after day or after so many hours, you, you know, uh, you'll see the change in, in yourself. Some of you had pain. That pain has left you or is leaving you right now. 
first sign that God is touching you. Another one, uh, maybe you're uh, you're you're already feeling you're feeling a warmth coming over you. You're feeling a, a touch of God. Well, write us. Let us know. Uh, we do get the prayer request, and sometimes people forget to uh, tell us when God has answered prayer. Well, we do get um, um, uh, testimonies, but you know we're praying for a young boy in uh, Cuba. Well, he's uh, he's moving. He said he you know he went into coma, wasn't moving, but now he's moving. He's talking. He's eating. Um, you know, God is. A God of miracles. He answers prayer. And uh, and so just release your faith right now. Isn't that right, Brother Dean? Yes. Yes. You know, agreeing together. We've talked about that a few minutes ago. Agreeing together means that we release our faith together. Amen. You know? uh, of course, I'm believing that when we speak it, it's going to happen. But if we want to multiply the impact, then you join your faith with our faith, and it becomes more powerful because this opens the door and releases the power of God to work in your life and those that you may be praying for as well. Amen. Amen. Uh, folks, uh, do put your faith into action. Uh, and uh, I want to say this, that um, some of you uh, tune in here and, and we know and, and we ask you to share. Why do we ask you to share? Because in sharing, you are helping other people. You are helping those that are in need. And there are many, many people in need of prayer today. And that's what we do on this broadcast, day in and day out, we pray. And it's not just on the broadcast. When we get prayer requests, we pray for them. And we've had uh, prayers of uh, urgent prayer requests from different parts of the world. Uh, and, um, you know, pastors in India who were arrested recently now released. Uh, why? Because they gathered together for prayer meeting. And what I was told is that uh, Hindu extremists rose up when got the police, got these pastors arrested, just simply for getting, getting together to pray. And uh, others were arrested at Christmas time simply for celebrating Christmas. Well, um, this, there are parts of the world where believers are persecuted. We need to pray for those believers. We need to pray for those pastors that God would give them strength and boldness. Uh, and uh, as you may know, we, we work in different parts of the world. Uh, we have been concentrating. We have been talking a lot about Ukraine, and we will continue to do that because of the urgency of the situation there and the war that is ongoing there. But we are also working in other places like Cuba and Nepal and India and Africa, other parts of Europe. So we need your prayers. We need your support. And uh, if God speaks to you, be obedient to God. That is so important. Well, on this journey, we're going to be in Poland. We're going to be in Ukraine. Uh, we're going to drive through Slovakia to get to Ukraine. We're going to um, then uh, come through the United Kingdom. And we've been asked to speak in uh, Manchester, England. And so if any of you are listening to us or in the UK, you could contact us, but we will be there, God permitting, on the 14th of May in the city of Manchester in the United Kingdom does need revival. And we know that God is moving in some churches. He is moving more freely than others, but we're praying for national revival and renewal in a faith in that nation. We're praying for America. As you can see, the name of this broadcast is Prayer for America and the nations. And that's what we do. And Brother Dean, America needs revival. And we thank God for what we're seeing happening in some of the campuses around the country where revival has started among the youth. And uh, when we were returning from Cuba recently, and we're heading back there again, God permitting, uh, after Ukraine, um, we'll be heading there to Cuba to have a pastor's conference there, God permitting. Uh, we're waiting on visas there. Uh, and so we're going, uh, but you know, when we were coming back, uh, 
Uh, we just, you know, we, we saw God move in a powerful way there, but we saw also God manifest his power. And, and, and we heard the testimony of one young man in Florida. He says, you know, we had a, a youth retreat and it was one of the Slavic churches there. And he says, you know, we started prayer at 8 p.m. And we didn't stop praying till 2 p.m. God baptized young people in the Holy Spirit. Someone who was demonized got set free and wonderful things happened. Well, it was it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't one of the universities we we're talking about. It was just a group of young people from a Slavic church having a, a retreat. And uh, as they began to pray, as they began to hunger for God, and let me tell you, that is beginning to happen. So do not stop praying. God is answering prayer. Revival is starting. Yes, there is a lot of negative news out. There's a lot of bad stuff happening. But you know, the devil's resisting. The devil's fighting what's about to happen. The devil does not want that revival, but he cannot stop the work of God, the move of God. And let me tell you, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail, will not be able to stop the church, will not be able to stop the move of God. And so let's pray. Let's pray for America right now, Brother Dean. Would you lead us in a prayer? Amen. Oh, Father, we just thank you for the United States of America. I thank you for this nation that has been founded upon godly principles and upon your word and upon what has been spoken by godly men. And Father, we pray for our nation right now that you will be able to have the freedom to continually move and to continue the move that you've already begun. We say, Father, revival come in Jesus' name. And Father, we come against the strife and the division and all of these things that have been happening in our nation that are not of you. We say, strife be done, be stopped in Jesus' name. And Father, we come against all of these shootings and things like that. Satan, we speak to you in the name of Jesus and say, stop pushing people to commit these crimes and destroy lives and kill people. We say, stop it in Jesus' name, that this will stop happening in different places, that things will change and be different. And Father, we pray for the churches in our nation, that they will rise up and they will become stronger and that they will resist the onslaught of the enemy that has come against our nation. And we say, churches, rise up, be strong. Pastors, be encouraged, rise up, and don't let the enemy cause you to be in fear but resist the enemy and say, no, I'm not going to compromise. No, I'm not going to, to stand for things that are not godly. And I say, peace, and I speak strength, and I speak encouragement. And Father, I come against the enemy where he has worked in so many different ways, trying to confuse things as far as people's identity. I say, stop. In the name of Jesus, stop beginning and pushing that agenda. In Jesus' name, I pray for our nation to have peace, to have unity, and to have a move of the Spirit of God all across our nation. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And Lord, yes, we lift up everyone who is in position of authority in this nation, those at the federal level, the state level, at the local level. We pray that they would seek you and your guidance and your wisdom. For Lord, they need your wisdom. They need your direction in this hour, that decisions and laws that they introduce would be those that are in agreement with your will and your word. And Father, we pray 
pray that you would revive their hearts. We pray that you would revive this nation. We pray for a renewal and revival in the hearts of men and women and children in this nation. And Lord God, we pray against a spirit of hatred, a spirit of uh, racism, the spirit of uh, destruction, the spirit of lawlessness. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we bind the principalities and rulers of darkness that are trying to peer me to this nation, and we say no to them, and we say yes to you, O oh God, and we say, O oh God, send a mighty move, send a mighty revival to this nation, and protect this nation. Have mercy and extend your grace to this nation. Once again, we pray in the name of Jesus. And Father, I lift up the nation of Ukraine. Father, as they have celebrated Easter yesterday, yes, they celebrate one week later. Lord, we pray pray that there would be a stirring in the hearts of the leaders in every part of that nation and in Russia. And Father, we pray that you would bring a spirit of repentance on the part of those that are pushing this war, that are trying to extend this war. And we say no to this war. We say yes to you, O oh God, yes to peace. For Lord, it is your desire to bring peace, that people would be at peace. And Lord, Lord, we pray that uh, that many, many lives would be touched, that, Lord, you would protect the lives of those pastors, those volunteers, those who are going to the front lines, delivering aid and helping the needy, ministering to them in uh, putting their own lives at risk. Help them, protect them. Bless the pastors, the churches, as they grow in the midst of this, uh, these trials and tribulations there. And Father, we thank you for the revival that is taking place there. We thank you for the thousands of souls that are coming into the kingdom. And we pray, oh God, that you would raise up more laborers to help these pastors and leaders who are gathering in that harvest. And Father, we pray that for a quick end to this war, we command this war to end in Jesus' name right now. Amen and amen. Well, uh, Brother Dean, thank you so much. Thank you for joining uh, me today on this broadcast. And I want to thank everyone who has joined us together to pray, to lift up this nation, to lift up other nations of the world, and to pray for one another. And if you have been touched by God, let us know. And please, please share this broadcast. Please put your likes on there, at the very least, on YouTube, on Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn, on Telegram, on Rumble, wherever you are watching us. Thank you. Let us know that you are watching. Let us know that you are being blessed. And please, please share this broadcast. This will help you to open up conversation with your friends about Jesus. And let me tell you, the world needs Jesus more than ever before. The world needs hope, and hope is in Jesus Christ. I like the name of a church in Zabodizhia, Ukraine. It's called Christ the Only Hope. And yes, Christ is our hope, and Christ is the answer. Yes, he is the answer today. And the Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So as I often say on this broadcast, don't look at how big that mountain may seem. Don't look at how big that problem may appear, but put your eyes on Jesus. He's much bigger than any problem, than any mountain, than any need that you may be facing. And remember that his power has not diminished, his ear is not deaf, and the Bible clearly states that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God richly bless you. Join us here Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. East Coast time, on the rerun at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 p.m. East Coast time. God richly bless you.